Everybody. Merry, Christmas. Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good morning to everyone in Facebook land who's watching live or may watch later. We're glad you are joining us virtually. We hope everyone's staying warm on these very chilly days we've been having. So we're going to open up with a word of prayer. We're going to open up with a word of prayer. And then uh, we will get started. Amen. All right. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you've done for us. 
we thank you for just this season that we can pause and celebrate who you are, the fact that you came from glory to walk on earth amongst us. What a miracle. We thank you for the miracle of Christmas. We thank you that you thought enough of us to come down to earth to be the sacrifice for our sins. And so we just pause to reflect on what you've done for us. And we are so grateful. And God, as we reflect, may we not just leave you in the manger, but may we reflect on your majesty. May we reflect on your miracles. May we reflect on all that you are and all that you've done in our lives. We have so much to be grateful for. And Lord, we pray for those who are struggling this holiday season, whether it's because of loss or um, just any other things that's causing them to struggle or experience sadness. God, we thank you that your Holy Spirit is comforter, and we pray for your comfort for those who are experiencing sadness today. Lord, we love you. We worship you, and we just ask that you would be with us during this service, that you would be glorified during this service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, Cindy, did we, I'm sorry, did we make the adjustments we need to make? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Are we good? Okay. Okay. Amen. All right. invite you to stand and sing along with us if you like. This first song may be new to you, but we encourage you to sing along and meditate on the words with us.
worship you. Tell it on the mountain this morning <laughs> that Jesus Christ is born. Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ is born.
celebrating our Savior's birth, but his life yeah. and his life in us. It's amazing yes. how good God is <laughs> and how good he's been. He's been such an honor and a blessing, and it's a privilege to know him and to have him and to love him. Yeah. And he's not just a God above, but he's a God with us. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He's Emmanuel. always yeah. reigning in our hearts and our lives. Yeah. Yes. We are so privileged to be his children. Thank you, God. Yes, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you Jesus.
Gebet wird verzehrt. Good morning and Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas to one and all. Happy Christmas too. And welcome to the Vineyard Community Church. Thank you so much, Suzette, Alicia, and Jackie, for providing worship today and giving a holiday to our worship team. We're so glad all of you could come join us here at the Vineyard and all of you at home. We are also live streaming our Sunday services on Facebook. Alicia Simmons and Sons are now going to light the five Christmas candles. Alicia? Okay. Well, while we're waiting for Alicia, I would just like to say that I have a grateful heart today. And it's because of one of my friends in the church that surprised me and Scott because we didn't expect her to be here today. And she gave us a hug and a smile and the biggest Merry Christmas I've heard today. So now we will hear from Alicia and her two sons. I just wanted to say thank God because last year Elijah got sick and we couldn't do this. So it's an honor and a privilege to heal ourselves for the family to do the Advent today. <sighs> Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious laws and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea. They said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, after this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route. God had warned them in the dream not to return to here. And that symbolizes the light of the world. Today we finish our 2022 Advent series, Ready or Not, 
Pastor Scott Purdom's Christmas message is found in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. You can find it printed in your bulletin. Next Sunday, January 1st, 2023, we will celebrate New Year's Day together with church at our regular time, 10 a.m. Our Food Resource Center is closed during the next two weeks for Christmas and New Year's, but we want to see you again Monday and Tuesday, January 9th and 10th. Our Christmas for Kids event last month provided Christmas for 85 families, 248 kids. Thank you to all who helped with the magnificent event, and please pray for these families today as they celebrate. Many of our vineyard small groups are taking time off during the holiday season. Be sure to check before attending Contact numbers are found on the back of your bulletin. Don't forget today's offering. We have a small table set up at the back of the sanctuary for your offering or donate on any church website or at Facebook. Thank you and Merry Christmas. And now Pastor Scott. <laughs> well, good morning. This is the Lord's Day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad that we're here on Christmas Day. Uh, on Sunday, on the Lord's Day, um, I have a, a, a Christmas present for you today. And uh, it's going to be in the form of a short sermon. <laughs> Take note, Brent. <laughs> no. You, you, you give them the gift of what God puts on your heart, and, and we, we expect that and we appreciate that very much. Um, and again, I would echo the thanks for the uh, wonderful worship this morning with Jacqueline and Alicia and Suzanne. <coughs> we are... We're reminded again this morning that you, God, are on your throne, and you are God alone. Amen. Amen. So, we're going to read the scripture this morning from John chapter 1, and uh, it's, it is printed in your bulletin, uh, and it'll be up on the, on the uh, screen as well. And this is taken from the New American Standard Version of the Bible, um, and uh, it just kind of fit with my thoughts today. <coughs> so, John chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. And by the way, that's not the John who's writing this, this book. This is uh, referring to John the Baptist. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light which, coming into the world, enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, 
who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory. Glory is of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that in the midst of the being ever, everlasting, you chose to visit, visit us here on planet Earth uh, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, your Son, our God, who loves us to the point of willing to give his life for us. We counted the privilege this morning to, to worship you and to think about the wonder and the majesty of his birth and his life and all that that means for us. We pray your blessing on our time together. Help me, Lord, to speak the truth. Uh, help us to hear your word and help us to enjoy this wonderful day together as we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas. <coughs> um, there are churches today that are not having worship, and that's fine. Uh, but we are. And uh, you might say, but, you know, it's a family day. And it is. And uh, Lori and I got up this morning and... Um, we exchanged presents, and we uh, said Merry Christmas to each other, and we had a little breakfast, and we made sure the dog was taken care of, and uh, it was a family day, and it is a family day, and we had a wonderful day yesterday with family. We were supposed to have a wonderful day with more family on Friday, but that was over on the east, on the west side, and we decided not to make that journey, <laughs> uh, and, and it's been rescheduled for next Wednesday. Uh, thank God for that. Merry Christmas. It's a gift-giving day. Yes. Uh, so I think about gifts that I've received over, over the years. I, I remember one year when I was uh, in high school and uh, <coughs> my brother Alan was still home uh, and I was still home. We were both still in high school. And we gave each other the exact same Christmas gift. Uh, it was a 33 album, so it was vinyl, and it was called Abbey Road uh, by the Beatles, and we gave each other the exact same gift. Um, Merry Christmas, it's a day of joy, and, and it is for millions and millions of people. But as we think about Merry Christmas, it's also a day of remembrance uh, for a lot of people, and uh, for Lori and I, it's a, it's a different year this year. Uh, Lori lost two sisters this year. I lost a son. And uh, it's just different. And uh, still a time of joy and love and peace, but a time of remembrance as well. So <coughs> we're going to think about John's Christmas story today. Uh, and you might say, well, you know, John doesn't really have a Christmas story. Um, you know, Matthew does, uh, and if you're familiar with the Gospel of Matthew, it starts off with the genealogy of Jesus, and then it tells us about Mary's call and the Magnificat, which is Mary's song, and then the visit of the wise men. So Ma Matthew's got a Christmas story, and Luke's got a Christmas story. That's probably the most familiar for many of us, uh, Mary and Joseph and the shepherds, and uh, just a wonderful story. We were watching the CBS Morning News this, this morning. We saw about the, uh, uh, the, the, the man who came up with some of the wonderful Christmas stories on, on uh, Rudolph and Frosty, and uh, we were reminded of the Charlie Brown Christmas as well. But John, you know, I don't know that you've ever seen a, a Christmas pageant on the Gospel of John. Uh, there's other things in John that we think about. And 
you know, I was a pastor for a lot of years, several decades, um, and uh, every year on uh, during the Advent season, there are scheduled readings for for Advent, and there's a gospel reading for every day of the uh, for every Christmas every Sunday of the year. And while the Gospel of John has always been part of the Advent readings, I don't think that I ever preached on John 1 for Christmas. And so this is new for me. But it's a great, it's a great scripture. And in fact, what I'd like you to do this morning is to memorize John's Christmas story. And I think you can do it. I have faith in you. It's two verses long, and the first verse is John 1, 1, and it goes like this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And if you can mem remember that, let's say it together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You've got half the story memorized. Really good. All right. And then the second half of the story is verse 14. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So let's say the whole thing together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that's it. Two verses. Uh, but it's filled with so much meaning. It's filled with the wonder, all the wonder that you find in Matthew and all the wonder that you find in Luke, we find it condensed, but here in John as well. And so let's think about these verses from John together. Uh, John tells us why Jesus came. In verse 3, he says, all things came into being through him. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Um, that includes you and me. We came into being because of Christ. Because in the, in the Bible, where the other place where it says in the beginning is where? Genesis. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, God created the world. And Jesus was there. Without him, all things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Hmm. So Jesus tells us, or John tells us about why Jesus came. Why did he come? Well, because he, was, he, he had created us. He saw the darkness and wanted to bring light, even though he knew that for many they would not comprehend what it was that he had come to do. And then John, the writer of the gospel, tells us a little bit about John the Baptist. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. And uh, one of the wonderful things about the Gospels is that we, we find out about the miraculous birth of John uh, just a few months before the miraculous birth of Jesus. Uh, they knew each other. They were probably cousins. Uh, they grew up together. Um, John says, he came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. So his, his stated purpose in life was to say, it's not me, it's him. It's him. And to point to him. He was not, he was not the light, John says, but he came to testify about the light. And really, that's our purpose too. Uh, you and I aren't the light, but we testify about the light because Jesus has changed our lives. And so, 
the Gospel of John tells us about John the Baptist right, right at the beginning. There came a man sent from God whose name was John as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. And he himself said, he said, I'm not the light. Don't look at me. Look at him. And so he did. And then John tells us about the true light. There was the true light which coming into the world en enlightens every man. But you might say, but every man isn't enlightened. Um, and obviously it's talking about humanity, not just men. Uh, all of, all of mankind. There was the true light which coming into the world enlightens everyone. He was in the world and the world was made through him. The world did not know him. There's a lot of sadness in, in this story, isn't there? He made the world. I made it. I gave them life. I gave them light. I gave them so much. The world did not know me, John says. The world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not what? Did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. He gave the right to become children of God, born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So that those who are the children of God have experienced, as we read later in the Gospel of John, being born again. He gave the right to become children of God. So what does it mean to be a child of God? Children of God who are not dominated by our circumstances nor defined by our limitations. Because, you know, when someone becomes a child of God, their circumstance may not change. Their resources may not, their physical resources may not change. Their limitations may not change at all. And yet, <coughs> they are children of God because God has entered their life. The Spirit of God is with them. The love of God is surrounding them. Their sins have been forgiven. And so, while their circumstances may not have changed at all and their limitations may not have changed at all, everything's different because God has come into their life and because now you're a child of God. I'm uh, reminded of a pastor friend of mine uh, from years ago. Uh, she was a great, great uh, pastor. She was a um, great preacher. And uh, she told the story one time of uh, one of the churches she served and uh, a little girl about six years old had been uh, baptized in the worship service that day and she'd been invited to the home uh, for lunch afterward. And uh, while after lunch the kids were running around and her older brothers, as older brothers are wont to do, um, were teasing her and and kind of making fun of the, all the attention being uh, shown on her that day. She said, you can't hurt me, I'm baptized. <laughs> and in effect, she was saying, you can't hurt me because I'm a child of God. And my life is different because I'm a child of God. And that's what John was saying. And so Jesus came as our Savior. 
Or to put it another way, here's the Christmas account. Jesus came to earth and took on human flesh. Did he have to do that? No. Uh, could he have done it another way? Could God have said, you know, I'm, I'm, I am God Almighty. And we're reminded of the, uh, through the singing this morning, uh, of the power and the might of God. And God could have said, you know, I'm just going to, well, you know, we don't know what, he, what else he could have done, but he could have done anything. He said, I'm just going to wipe all their sins away, and I'm going to wipe the urges away. I'm going to change everything, and that's just going to be how it, uh, how it is. But instead, God said, no, I'm going to come. I'm going to become one of them. I'm going to take on human flesh, and I'm going to identify with them. <clears throat> you know, and there's so much about Jesus' life that we don't know. Uh, you know, we don't know what it was like to be the child Jesus. Uh, we don't know what it was like to be the parent of the perfect child. While all of us who are parents have, their kids have insisted they were right from time to time when we knew they weren't, uh, when Jesus insisted he was right, he was. Um, but he identified with us because he experienced life as a child and as a brother and as a young man and as an apprentice to his father, his physical father, his, his, his earthly father. Um, and he took on vulnerability uh, because as a human, we are all vulnerable. Uh, we're vulnerable to the, to the meanness around us. We're vulnerable to the love around us. We're vulnerable to, to life itself. Jesus took on human flesh in order to show us who God is and what God is like. Jesus came and he showed us what love is. Perfect love. So, why did Jesus come? <clears throat> well, let me tell you what he did not do. <clears throat> he did not come as a tourist. Um, I have uh, had the privilege of, of traveling to three different nations outside the United States. Uh, uh, the first time I ever traveled outside the United States was to Fiji, on, uh, down near Australia on a, on a two-week mission trip. Um, and I, th I was there. Uh, we lived for a week in a, in a village, and then we went to the capital city of, of Suva uh, for a week-long celebration of 150 years of Methodism in, in Fiji. Uh, the Methodists were the first missionaries who brought Christianity to Fiji, and, and it changed the island. It, it changed everything about it. Uh, and we were there to take part in that. And even though in the village on the night before we left, uh, they said to us, and there was seven high school kids and four adults, they said to us, when tourists come, they come and they, they see things and then they go. They said to us, when you come, when you come back, you come not as a tourist, but as a family, as, as part of the family. And so there's a difference, isn't there? Tourists come and they, they snap a lot. Well, they, they pull their phones out now and, and snap a lot of pictures. Um, and they see things and they are probably on a tour and all of that. But Jesus, Jesus didn't come as a tourist. Uh, Jesus, in effect, pitched his tent with us. That is, he made his life with us. And it was a temporary life, to be sure, but it was his life, and he lived it with, with his people. He showed us what 
what God looks like in human flesh. He learned the language. You know, when I went to, I went to Fiji, I went to Israel, and I went to Bali. Those are the three places I've been outside the United States. Um, and each one has a different language, although, thank God, uh, English was spoken also, <laughs> and, and it made it uh, better for me. But uh, I didn't take the time to learn the language. Uh, but if I was living there, I would have. If I was going to pitch my tent there and live out my life there, I would have, and Jesus did. He learned the language. He became one of us. And one of the remarkable things that Jesus did that to this day sets Jesus apart from everyone else in one way is that is he demonstrated God's love and ministry by example. He didn't just publish a book and say, okay, here's what you do. You know, study the book. All the answers are in there. Go out and do it. You know, you, say, you can say, well, but we've got the Bible. We do. But we also have the account of the life of Christ. And what Jesus did was he came and he not only spoke God's truth, but he showed us God's truth with how he treated people. You know, Brent, recently, was it just last week, you, you talked about the man uh, th that they let the, uh, his friends let the lame man down in, into the house um, to be healed by Jesus, and they let him down through the roof, and Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And uh, when he was called to task, he says, well, which is easier, um, to say your sins are forgiven or to say rise up and walk? And so he said, rise up and walk. And by the way, your sins are, forg are still forgiven. Um, but Jesus demonstrated God's love and ministry by example. And ultimately, because he was committed to doing that, it took him to the cross. Where he says, God's love is so great and so wonderful and so deep for all of you that the Son of God is willing to go to the cross so that we all could live. And so, so he showed us how to live and how to do ministry. And sometimes we're tempted to say, well, here, take this book. And, and, and read it, and if you have any questions, you can come, out, come back and ask me. But you'll figure it out. That's not what he calls us to. He calls us to ministry together with the people that he's placed in our lives and to show God's love and to do God's love and to do ministry among people, to pitch the tent, to learn the language, to take on human flesh. So our ministry in Jesus' name is exactly that. Pitch your tent among the people of God. And who are the people of God? Everyone. Everyone that you meet is called to be a child of God. They, they may not be there yet, but they're called to be the child of God, and it may be that you will have the privilege of seeing them make that transformation uh, from child of the world, child of God. Pitch your tent among the people of God. Have compassion and love in action. And realize that like a baby in a manger, your efforts may be very small, but there may be great results. Um, so, we are called to be the people of God, showing love and compassion. And if you want to know how to do that, look at Jesus. Jesus lived his life among us, took on human flesh. So, so every time I've preached here, I've finished up with a question, which is, yeah, but so what? Why BSW? Uh, so here's my... Concluding thoughts.
I told you it was going to be short today, um, and it is. For God so loved the world. Just a couple ver- chapters later, John will tell us that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that started with, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh, and did what? Dwelt among us. For God so loved the world. Love came down at Christmas. And that's the truth. Jesus left the glory of heaven to become one of us. And God God can do anything. God could have done it other ways, but that God did it that way. And he calls us to love and to ministry and to follow his example. So I have two more words for you. And they are, Next, ta-da, ta-da, Merry Christmas, <coughs> Merry Christmas, amen. So we're going to uh, sing a song after I, after I pray, I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing a song and then we're going to be dismissed and we're going to go out in the world and say, in fact, I encourage you when you get out to the parking lot at the top of your lungs, ta-da, Merry Christmas. And throughout the day, just, you know, if, if things are getting slow at your house, just come out with a ta-da, Merry Christmas. Let's pray, and then we're going to sing Heart the Herald Angels Sing. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that on a, I, we assume, a cold winter night uh, a couple thousand years ago, you looked at the world and in particular, you, you said to the shepherds, ta-da! And then, but long before that, months before that, you had said it to Mary and to Joseph, neither of whom could, you know, could hardly believe it, what was actually happening. And then as Jesus grew, we learned more and more about God become flesh. We saw him as a boy at the temple and we saw him calling his disciples and we saw him walking on the water and we saw him teaching thousands and showing love and demonstrating the compassion and the love of God which ultimately led him to the cross and to the empty grave where once again, God said through Jesus, when Jesus walked out of that empty grave, ta-da, and life is, has never been the same. The world has never been the same because Jesus Christ was born and lived and died and rose again. And so we thank you and we love you. We ask that you would help us to demonstrate with love and compassion what it means to be a child of God in a world that desperately needs to hear that. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's sing uh, Hark the Herald. And I thought I had the words with me, but I don't. So I'm going to turn around and sing with you. Uh, uh, And uh, let's stand as we sing. And you can take my voice down as much as you'd like. <laughs> and we're going to do this a cappella. Art the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations cry. Join the triumph of the sky with a jolly host proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adorned, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Filled with quest-
God, thank you for this wonderful day and for a world that's been visited by Christ Almighty, our Lord and Savior. And that changed everything, and it changes it for us. Help us, Lord, to be a church that reflects the love and the ministry of Jesus Christ in all that we do and say. We love you and praise you and give and thank you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you.